Hey guys, my name is Lewis with Rocketstock.com and today we're going to look at using Film Convert inside of DaVinci Resolve. I think it's a fair assumption to say that Film Convert is often thought of as the After Effects or Premiere Pro plugin, but no, it does work in Resolve too, and while being biased, I would argue that by combining Film Convert with DaVinci Resolve, it makes the plugin more powerful than using it with any other software or by using it in the standalone module. Film Convert is different from a film color preset or a film look grading plugin in two ways. First, it uses the exact color science behind various film stocks and it applies the chosen film stock to your image on your camera's base data. So for example, in this image, when I apply the Kodak Vision 3 stock with the Blackmagic Ursa 4.6 camera profile, which is what the footage was shot on, the film is applied and our image looks relatively neutral in regards to contrast and exposure. But if I apply the same film look but use a Red 1MX camera profile, it interprets the film stock entirely different and somewhat ruins the image. And this is very powerful in making sure that your image looks as close as possible to what that film would actually look like. With that covered, let's have a look at how you can use the plugin within Resolve and why it happens to be better than using it with other software. To use the plugin, we first have to hop to the color page and open the effects panel. By all means, you could also apply this and use the effect on the edit page, but that effect will not appear on a node on the color page. And as we're grading, well, you might as well be here. With the effects panel up, scroll to the bottom and find the film convert plugin and apply it to an empty node. The UI of the plugin is slightly different than what you can find in other software versions, but the operations are just the same. First, we need to choose the make and model, so the film profile is being appropriately applied. At first, you're going to need to download the profile if not installed, so you simply select the make and model and hit apply, and Resolve will tell you that the profile is not installed and you can hit download. As a side note, as someone who likes to have everything at hand, it's not recommended that you download all of the profiles in case you know one day you're going to need a specific profile and you want to have it at hand, as each profile is around about 300 to 500 megabytes. Therefore, just download what you need as and when. With the correct make and model chosen, we now have our first look at Film Convert being applied to our image. If the profile is a little underexposed or if it throws the temperature off balance, we have two primary sliders that can quickly adjust those properties. With that complete, we now have to choose what film profile we want added to our image. Guys, the choice here is yours and yours alone. And instead of just playing around with each profile to see what works best for your image, I would recommend looking at what film stock your favorite movies have used and what stock is typically used for specific genres. That way, you're basing your choice on a more logical approach rather than just finding what looks good for that particular scene. Underneath the film profile, we have size. And at first, it's not apparent at what this does but it changes the size of the theoretical film. So at 35 millimeter full frame, we're gonna have a nice crisp image with lots of detail and clarity. At eight millimeter, which is inherently smaller, the film is going to have less clarity and will also have more grain, which we can see has been incorporated when I switch size. And let me interject with a second side note, I am using optimized media, so the clarity of the footage might be a little less than usual. Underneath, we then have three adjustable properties unique to the film profile, the color, the curve, and the grain. The color, as you may have guessed, it controls the amount of color from the film profile that is applied. However, it's also important to note that the color slider will also dictate how much of the curve is applied, whereas the curve will only control the intensity of the curve itself. And the curve is essentially the contrast curve, which is unique to that film profile you've chosen as some film stocks will have more contrast than others. Underneath, the grain slider will dictate how much generated grain is included, and often I like to lower this down to 50% or to 0% and use some archival film scans. For the film settings, that's it. Just these few sliders and drop-down menus will help you create your film-inspired look. And to be honest, a lot of the time, these initial steps can get you a good look. However, there are going to be times when you need to further adjust the properties of the image. If you're new to Film Convert and you're new to Resolve, we don't have to jump over to this advanced primary correction controls just yet, as Film Convert also has that covered. Underneath, we have a further four adjustable color correction parameters. The saturation slider will obviously increase the saturation or desaturate the image. And then we have three submenus for the shadows, midtones, and highlights. 
Now these panels may initially seem confusing, but they're not. They're essentially a decompressed version of the primary color wheels here. The gamma, lift and gain sliders all correlate with the master wheels. For example, dragging the lift master wheel right will make the shadows lighter and dragging the wheel left will darken the shadows. The slider does the same thing. And the angle and amount sliders also work like the primary wheels, but without the imagery. So the angle slider correlates to what hue the wheel would be angled towards, and the amount correlates to how far you would push that wheel towards that specific hue. However, within the Film Convert plugin, you may notice that the strength of the adjustment isn't as strong as using the primary wheels. We can also adjust the black point and white point, but after adjusting the highlights and shadows, there's really any need. And finally, we have the option to export our look as a LUT. So this is the Film Convert plugin in a nutshell. And I think if you are after that film look and you don't know a lot about grading, it's a decent addition to your library. But for the reason as to why it's better to use Film Convert in Resolve, it's because you're using Resolve. Resolve is renowned for its color grading software and now you get to merge the best of both worlds. But sometimes you can even use Film Convert to give your already established grade that extra bit of magic. In some circumstances, I would be happy with this grade, but here I wanna give it that extra bit of filmic goodness. So I'm gonna add Film Convert to a new node and choose the make and profile of the camera. However, initially, the adjustment from Film Convert is gonna be too great because we've already graded the image and the image already has a corrected curve. So I'm gonna choose the film that I want, which is Kodak Portrait 400. And then essentially to lower the intensity of the plugin, I'm just gonna reduce the film color and also reduce the film grain. Now, when I play back both images, while there's only a slight variation, we can see the plugin has brought the grade to a new level where it looks that extra bit more like film than digital, perhaps. So film convert in Resolve. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, remember to like and subscribe, and you can find more tips and tricks on the Rocket Stock blog. Until next time.